G'day fuckheads! Once more we delve into the delicious lore of Warhammer 40k, using the tried and true formula of a top 5 list. By far one of the fucking sickest things about the Warhammer franchise is chaos, an endless tide of overpowered demons that our heroes have to fight against time after time, winning slightly less each time until the FUCKING EMPEROR comes back and unleashes his holy psychic jizz to cleanse the galaxy of the literal aids that is chaos. However, there are demons that even the Emperor himself struggle with, and those are the demons we are looking at today. This isn't a list for which demons has the best story and lore, or which demon has the biggest cock or, you know, or cocks depending if it's a Slanishy demon or not. It's about raw power and achievement. Number 1 will be the strongest on the list, and number 5 will be the weakest on the list. As I list each demon, I'll go over their powers, feats, and which god they are aligned with. I'll then also detail what they are currently up to, and what they next want to achieve. But before we get started, I want to quickly talk about this video sponsor. My friend's book that I've read recently. It's called Realm Wars, and it's got super soldiers, sex, superpowers, sex, Muslims raping Europe, pseudo vampires, and Australians. So it's pretty up my alley if I say so myself. It's not a long read, but it's bloody good, and only costs like three bucks. It's set some time in the future where the world is in the midst of the next global conflict. The Muslim Brotherhood has begun dominating Europe and wages war against the rest of the world. An Australian SAS commander with some spicy special abilities, fuck yeah, is off murking said Muslims. Shit hits the fan, some black spec op dudes show up and a lot of people die. So it's a good time all round. You can read the first chapter for free now if you're interested and as I said the book itself only costs $3. Links to that if you're keen will be everywhere. Let's get into it. Coming in hot we have the slut god's favourite sex toy, Shalaxi Hellbane. In response to everyone giving her shit about her warriors being useless in battle and getting fucked on by the other demons, Slanesh decided to make the perfect warrior. This came in the form of Shalaxi Hellbane, that's definitely not how you pronounce it but fuck off. The greatest keeper of secrets. Unlike 99% of Slaneshi demons, Shalaxi's purpose isn't to go around raping people. Although, I wouldn't be surprised if that was something that she did in her spare time, but I mean, like, she is still a demon of Slanesh. No, Shalaxi was handcrafted to kill other demons, especially Cornite Bloodthirsters. You know something is powerful when its main purpose is to kill immortal greater demons of war. But Shalaxi doesn't just kill greater demons, she also slaughters hive tyrants, star drakes, elite space marines, custodians, man, you name it, she's killed it. If the legends are true, Shalaxi has even defeated and banished the legendary bloodthirst, the Scarbrand. Yeah, yeah, I know everyone has defeated and banished Scarbrand at some point, but it's still an impressive feat nonetheless. This Keeper of Secrets is relatively new, and was basically Games Workshop's response to everyone saying how piss weak the Slaneshi demons are in the lore. So while Shalaxi is strong, she takes our weakest spot on the list. Probably because she's a woman. Next on this list, we have an interesting greater demon of corn, the Heart of Blood. Now now, before you get your dick in and not being like, Oh my god, Scarbrand is better, or What the frickety frackety fuck, obviously Angrath the Unbound is number one because he's Korn's chosen warrior. Yeah, well, lick my balls and suck on my dick because Heart of Blood is better, and now I'll explain why. Scarbrand and Angrath are so fucking vanilla, like they're just bigger, stronger versions of average bloodthirsters. They don't have any distinct special abilities or powers, beyond hitting shit really fucking hard with an axe that is bigger than Uluru. Like they could literally commit 9-11 with only one swing, so they obviously do have some damage behind them, but a bunch of Muslims achieve the same thing and no one is putting them on any tier lists. The Heart of Blood on the other hand has all these dope ass powers. Not only is he immune to psychic attacks, but he also can actually generate a massive psychic force field as well, that basically lasts forever. So the bad boy is immune to magic. He also had this weird Vladimir ass looking ability called Bloodstorm, which basically creates tornadoes that suck people off. And by suck off, I mean drains them of their blood, not sucks on their wieners. This is Korn we're talking about, not Slanesh. The Heart of Blood created a set of armor for himself that was so powerful that it became its own demon entity, even when separated from himself for extremely long periods of time. The Heart of Blood was eventually captured by warsmith Barb and Falk and his Iron Warriors, and its psychic defensive powers were used to protect a fortress for over 10,000 years. Eventually the Heart of Blood was freed, but severely weakened. In his weakened state, he was confronted by his arch nemesis, the Omphalia's Demenium. If I actually pronounce that right, then I actually deserve like 10 blowjobs right now, that word looks fucked. Who was also a legendary demon prince of corn. Despite the Heart of Blood's weakened state, it proceeded to suck off everything he could to regain his power, and then he tore the head off the Olympios and drank its essence. That's right, this red motherfucker, after 10,000 years of captivity and torture, was able to defeat its arch rival on his arch rival's terms. The Heart of Blood then held off a massive rival chaos faction by itself for days until the invaders finally fled. 
This is why the Heart of Blood is way stronger than the other demons of Corn. Scarbrand dies like three times a day, he's not even good. Lubing ourselves up with AIDS juice, now we have the Prisoner from the Emerald Cave. Now this sounds like a pretty nice name to have, so you're probably imagining some nice green crystalline cave where some sly witful demon awaits. Well, scrap that memory because this fucking ugly cunt is fucking chat. Literally a blob of overpowered cancer, the prisoner of the Emerald Cave is so powerful that the Imperium is not even sure if an exterminatus would actually be able to kill it. Basically, it's this massive, unclean abomination that resides locked away on a planet. The disease this thing spits out are completely different to Nurgle's classic creations. A Nurgle space brain was infected by the prisoner's virus, and he literally fell to the ground convulsing because he, he just couldn't handle the virus, even though he's got like a thousand other viruses coursing through him. So you know this shit's pretty strong. This big AIDS-infused blob can also change its form at will, so it can grow multiple appendages, mouths, or if it was a demon of Slanesh, lots of tits. So in 40k, there are a few demons greater than a greater demon, and they're called Supreme Demons, and this is one of those. When Abaddon discovered this thing's existence, he tried to release it from the planet, but Kalidor Drago defeated him. However, even with the combined forces of the Grey Knights, Dark Angels, and the Imperial Guard, they were not enough to even visibly hurt the prisoner. Like, the cunt destroyed Titans like they were nothing. Because of the Abomination's apparent immortality, the Imperium decided to just seal the planet off so no one could access the Prisoner from the Emerald Cave, cause fuck dealing with that shit. The Prisoner of the Emerald Cave is the confirmed source of Ebola. So we've got a slut that can cut through bloodthirsters like paper, a demon of corn that is immune to magical attacks and sucks people off, and then an unkillable blob of AIDS. What could be more powerful than these? The answer is the Lord of Change, Arteos Rao Cariz. I definitely did not say that right, but you get the idea. To give context, this is the only Lord of Change that Titsnitch genuinely fears. Titsnitch controls a lot of shit that has to do with fate, hence he basically has the fate of all his demons thought out. Except for Aetios. Aetios was too powerful and had too much free will to a point where Titsnitch could not actually write out his fate clearly. So old mate Titsnitch used some warp fuckery to completely and utterly bend Aetios to his will adding dozens of layers of spells and enchantments to ensure Aetios would be unable to diverge from his path. He was physically now forced to follow. A consequence of this is the fact that Aetios is now completely batshit insane by the shackles of his fate. Hence, he just wants to fucking kill everyone. Summoning Aetios is an instant death sentence not for just the people who summoned him, but the entire planet. He literally only gets summoned when Titsnitch cultists want to perform an exterminatus of their own. Due to his rage, whenever someone tries to discover what his true fate and purpose is, he will instantly appear in front of them and vaporize them and likely their entire planet. So even the followers of Titsnitch rarely talk of him, and when they do, it's not very loudly. Try and tell me Fate Weaver can beat Aetios, when Aetios can just appear in front of him and instantly destroy him. No amount of foresight can save you from that. And we are finally down to our number one spot, the greatest most powerful demon to ever exist in Warhammer 40k, this is exciting. This demon is not bound to any of the Chaos Gods as it was not created by any of them. Its name is Draction. I, I don't think I've gotten any names right this entire video, but it doesn't matter. Draction was created when the first ever murder was committed by a man, with some theories even saying that it was the murder of the Emperor's father that created him, or it. As Draction aged and grew in power, it developed an obsession to murder the God Emperor of mankind, likely due to the connection they shared. It went around the universe possessing various humans in an attempt to find one with a big enough gun to kill the Emps. However, despite causing mayhem each time it emerged, the Emperor intervened and banished him back to the warp. The Emperor did not actually know how to kill Drachin, which is a first as the Emperor is known to be able to pretty much give any demon a true death. In the final Siege of Terra, Drachin charged with a demonic army through the webway to attack the palace itself. When the God Emperor of Mankind entered the webway and supremely mindfucked the entire demon army to death, Drachin survived. The Emperor then demanded Drachen fight him, and Drachen felt compelled to fight. The two forces fought, yes, with Drachen impaling the Emperor in at least a dozen different spots, blood flowing heavily from his golden armor, but the Big E doesn't give a fuck, so without a single complaint, he kicked Drachen's fucking ass to the curb and morphed him into a sword. He then stabbed said sword into one of his favorite custodians and told him to go for a jog into the webway. The custodian was never seen again. To be honest, I'm not really sure what the plan was there, but Drachin reappears thousands of years later, still as a sword. Everyone who tried to wield him instantly died, until the universe's biggest fucking failure, Abaddon, arrived and picked up the sword, and now it's his sword, so there you go. When a demon can injure the God Emperor of Mankind in a 1v1 fight and still survive in some form, 
makes them literally god tier. All the other demons on this list, as powerful as they were, would not pull the Emperor's attention or effort as much as this hentai looking fucker did. And that wraps up this list guys. I was actually pretty happy to see that most of the powerful greater demons of each god wasn't the standard ones we already knew. It seems like almost like the demons that have some kind of separation or independence from their deity turn out stronger due to the seemingly less rules and dampeners put upon them. If you guys want to rejig this list or mention some interesting demons that should be on it, then comment it below. I read all comments, especially the ones that talk about how great I am. Remember the rule, if you get funny, you get a heart. If you guys want to support me in this channel another step, then Patreon is a massive help. All you gotta do is send one dollar or more and you get access to a massive library of original Warhammer lewd art. Literally just posted hentai of a lizard woman there last night, so if that isn't a damn good incentive, then I don't know what is. Join the Discord if you wanna fuck around. Peace.